guide to the unusual ways of God, Alex B.C. Mutale. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, I just want to appreciate God for today. I want to appreciate um, my wife in absentia, my children. I want to appreciate my father, my mother. I want to appreciate um, our guest of honor, uh, Mr. Mohan. I want to appreciate uh, Mr. Kelly's discount seated with me. I also want to appreciate the organizing team and I also want to appreciate all of us. God bless you. Please, you can clap hands for yourselves. Okay. Uh, straight into the talk. I don't want us to take a lot of time because I also don't want to steal the time from the book. I believe the book will speak on its own and already the book has been speaking to all of us uh, it's a book that has already um, brought uh, controversies why the god of darkness we heard what mr moan said and um, you know people asking why the god of darkness why this why that but one thing i want to tell you tonight is that the biggest problem of every believer is light. The reason as to why we fail to prevail in life as Christians is because of light. And the light that we always talk about as believers is a light that we do not have, but we just imagine it. Let me say this. Believers do not know Believers have learned how to think outside the box, hence laughing at others who seem to be behind and they say they are thinking within the box, we are thinking outside the box. But tonight I came to challenge all of us. Can we just destroy the box so that we can think properly? Because... Thinking outside the box is not everything. Sometimes the box can be the distraction that we are facing. So we don't think outside the box. We destroy the box in order to think, okay, if we say we think outside the box, what is the box for? So it means the box has got no use. And as believers, we find ourselves discussing things that will not take us anywhere. And when we talk God, we've got a lot of denominations. God nominated us, but we denominated ourselves. We fight that church is not, that church is, why? Because we don't have much to talk about and much to do. Why am I speaking in this vein? Already, I know the book has brought a lot of controversy. This one is saying uh, they worship a God of darkness. They worship a God. We are going to accept tonight because I want you to understand that darkness is inferior to God because it is God that created darkness. And I also want to teach you one thing tonight and uh, this is um, that one of the arts that the devil has so very much mastered, which believers do not know, is to play with darkness. God does not intend, or God's intention was not to give you light. God's intention was to make you the light. The Bible does not say you have the light. The Bible says you are the light. So it is sad to note that a Christian who is light is looking for God in the light.
it is sad for somebody who was told you are the light of the world to continue looking for God in the light. It is sad. Because one of the arts that the devil has mastered is to play with darkness. Why is it that you do not understand the doings of the devil? The Bible says, do not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. The devil can devise, but we do not know how he works or how he operates. Why? Because the light that we think we have is the greatest obstruction that we are having today. So, we are Christians and we think when we're going through low moments, down moments, we think God is not with us. We begin to question the existence of God. Why? Because of a little situation that we are going through. Lord, are you there? Because this problem is too big. But God understands that it is in dark moments that he creates. Whenever you see darkness in your life, it means God is about to create. In the beginning, the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But the earth was without form and it was void. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. So, what caused darkness to be around the surface of the deep? To be upon the surface of the deep. Whenever darkness is invoked, whenever darkness is invited, whenever darkness is encountered, it's a sign that the place is empty. What makes darkness to preside over a place is emptiness. When something is empty, darkness is there. And anything that is empty is, becomes the workplace for God. God begins to use that place as his workplace. But sometimes we chase away darkness by inviting temporal light. When God created the angels, he started with the three archangels. Number one was Gabriel. Number two was, number one was Michael. Michael, E-L at the end. Number two was Gabriel. E-L at the end. Gabriel means uh, like unto God or likeness of God. Uh, uh, that is uh, Michael. Michael means like unto God. Gabriel means man of God. Then there's one third one, the most interesting factor and his name was Lucifer. The only person who had a name that had no E-L at the end. And the word Lucifer means light holder. So, the duty that Lucifer had is to hold light. Yet light was not inside him. When Lucifer lost the light, he found himself in darkness. The reason as to why the devil is called, uh, demons are called powers uh, of darkness is because the founder lost the light that was given to him. The light was not in him, but the light was around him. The Bible says he was the light bearer, light holder. So when he lost it, he found himself in darkness. This is why God does not give, want to give you light. God wants to turn you into the light of the world. Listen, God is not turning you into the light of your community or society. The Bible says the world. What is the world? The world is not uh, the universe. The world is a system. So when you talk about the whole world... What is the whole world? There is a difference between the world and the universe. The world is a system. So when the Bible says you are the light of the world, it means you are the light of this system. The world is not found in a certain place. The world is everywhere. It means the world is corrupt. 
That's why the Bible says, I'm sending you as sheep amidst the wolves. Be wise as a serpent, not as a snake. Serpent. Serpent means the wisdom of a snake. So, the, Jesus was telling us, don't be a snake, but have the wisdom of a snake. So, I'm sending you amidst, amidst wolves. Wolves, when wolves see sheep, sheep is food to the wolves. Mostly, as believers, we are not doing well in business. We are not doing well in other sectors. We are good at speaking in tongues. We have not conquered the world. We haven't conquered the world. Why? We are afraid of one thing. It's called darkness. Do you know that God lives in darkness? Solomon, the wisest man, it must be somewhere in first, uh, first Kings chapter number 8, verse number 12. The Bible says, don't you know that God dwells in darkness? God said, I, I will dwell in thick darkness. Psalm, it must be 11, is it 11, 18 or 18, 11? The Bible, 18, 11, the Bible says, uh, uh, darkness, he has made darkness his abode. God does not live in light. God lives in darkness because light cannot live in light. If you do not understand darkness, it is hard for you to appreciate light. The reason as to why believers are so useless to say to the society is because you want to be with your fellow light as you say. Why can't you take your light into another person's life where there is darkness? The God that we serve is light. There is something also that you need to understand. The secret place. Why is the place where God is found called the secret place? It's because you can't see it. It means darkness. And the Bible says, They that dwell in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow. The shadow is dark. And the Bible says, You shall abide under the shadow. So, you are not abiding under the light. You are abiding under the shadow. And the shadow is darkness. Whenever God wants to use somebody, God will expose them to darkness so that they can shine. The reason as to why you can't shine is because there's no darkness anyway. Stars only shine when it's dark. God made night so that the moon can also shine. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand this tonight. That even the prosperity you are looking for, Is in the dark. If you read, it must be 73. There is a scripture there. Isaiah 45, verse number 3. God said, and I will give you the treasures of darkness. The treasures you are looking for are not in the light. The treasures that you're looking for are in the dark world. So I'll give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches. When you find riches exposed, just know it's a trap. When you find riches exposed, it's a trap. And some of you say, oh, this is an open door. It's not every door that you see open that is an open door. Some open doors are traps. Okay. 
So he says, and I'll give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. The people that deal with God are those that understand what it means to enter into secret places. <laughs> okay. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, I am the God of Israel. The only way you are going to know that he is the God of Israel is when he gives you treasures that are hidden in dark places. Christians are not rich today because they are not ready to invade the dark world. Christians are not rich today because they are not ready to invade darkness. When Christians see darkness, they quote scriptures. Yet a normal believer, when you see darkness, you need to shine. Whenever you see darkness, you don't need to quote no scripture. It's time for you to just shine. You know, there are times that the devil will attack you. You wake up, you begin, hey, in the name of Jesus. Sometimes the devil will look and say, this one is still ignorant. Sometimes the devil must ask himself why he's attacking you. Do you know that sometimes laughter... Is a sign of victory. Imagine the devil attacks you. You wake up. You laugh. You sleep. The devil remains with a question. There's something that he knows which I do not know. But you do not know how to bring darkness to order. The biggest problem of every Christian is light. Christians are still holding light. They have not yet become the light. I once went to a certain church that people said were into Satanism. They invited me. I went there and I preached. We did marvelous things by the Spirit of the Lord. When I came, a certain pastor stopped me and said, you are from there, a man of God, a true man of God, going to a satanist. I said, wow. So at this level, you are still afraid of a satanist. How are they going to know God if you are ever running away? Go to the marketplace. How many Christians are there? Why Christians are still in the closet, they are praying. No, we are praying, we are praying. Jesus said, watch and do what? Pray. Many Christians are praying, they are not watching. The biggest problem of every believer is light. Acts chapter number 9, the Bible says, when Paul was going to Damascus to persecute the Christians, the Bible says he met Jesus. And the light came. And the Bible says, Paul went blind. You see what light can do? When you meet light in light, you see what it can do? Light in light is so blinding. When you want to find light in light, you go blind. The Bible says, Apostle Paul went blind. And he was commanded to go and meet another person to pray for him. But before he's prayed for, he was taught, you need to be imparted with knowledge. Why are believers not making it? Believers are afraid of something called darkness. When you see witches flying there, you'll be the first one going to go on the ground and pray. Why are you praying from the ground? Why can't you stand and walk? There are certain things that you win by not confronting them. There are certain battles that you, need, you, you, you have to win by not confronting them. So, the biggest problem that every Christian has is not darkness, but light. You assume you have the light. 
Yet God wants you to be the light. The entrance of the word bringeth light. It is not the having of the word, the entrance. So when, when the word hides inside, it produces light. So why is the word hiding to produce light? God still invests in hiding. The one thing that makes God to be God is that he, up to today, he has still not revealed himself. The reason as to why you are so common is that it's because you are everywhere. You are too exposed. So if we were to be like God, to become uncommon, we are going to attract a lot of value as believers. We are seen everywhere praying. That's why we have lost potency. It was some years back when they brought a certain ministry that says, I'm not criticizing, but I gave a word over this. They said, every Christian, if you want to pray, you need to have a degree. You need to have what? You why? Didn't they touch other religions but Christians? Because it is only Christians that can be moved anyhow. Because they have a God whom they do not even know. The biggest problem of every believer is light. Light, ladies and gentlemen. God said, I will dwell in thick darkness. The Bible says, I sent darkness and they were saved. God will allow you to go through prison so that you can shine right there. Why is it that every person in the Bible, every person in the Bible that God used went through a certain moment, yet they came out victorious? Jesus on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says whilst he was on the cross, he was injured, he was bruised. The Bible says light went out. The Bible says darkness invaded. Do you know that that was the presence of God coming? Because when God wants to do something, he sends darkness first. So when darkness came, the Bible says the curtain in church was rent in twain and everybody was given access to the Holy of Holies. So every time God wants to do a new thing, he sends darkness, not light. Because when God sends darkness, he may be punishing those without light. Knowing that my children will survive, but the problem is that Christians also die in ignorance when darkness is sent. So, the biggest problem that believers are having is not darkness, but it is light. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not have to have light. You have to be the light. So that when darkness comes, you will not complain. It's like Zambia, the difference between Zambia and some other nations. When Zesco seizes power, when Zesco cuts, you discover that we begin to, to we, we, we start calling uh, uh, offices here and there. Why don't we have power? But in some other nations, the moment there is a power cut, psh, a genset starts. Psh, nobody's complaining. We complain because when the light is taken away, we have no option. When everybody's experiencing load shedding, 
we are also experiencing Lord changing as Christians. Everybody is complaining. We are also complaining. Look at COVID-19. When COVID-19 came, we have a wrong, we had a wrong interpretation of it all. We were all complaining, God, what is this? Yet there are some other people who are thinking of making masks and selling. In the midst of a problem, a Christian should not complain. A Christian must be or must find a solution. This is what this book is all about. This book has come to destroy the box so that we can think properly as believers. We are still praying prayers. Lord, don't give me a lot of money because I may leave you. These are prayers that Christians are offering today. You are still offering this prayer. And to some of us, it's not a prayer, it's an excuse. I don't want to have a lot of money because I feel I may lose my way. God is God. The Bible says he owns a thousand cattle on a hill. The Bible says silver and gold belongs to me. But why is, is, is he not backsliding from being God? Why should you backslide from being a believer? Interpretation of darkness, ladies and gentlemen. Darkness is something that was introduced before light. God said, let there be light. Why? Because darkness was already there. So darkness does not belong to the devil. Darkness is not of the devil. It's just that when the devil wants to scheme, he hides. Then when he does something, he comes out. Christians don't know how to hide. I'm a believer. Everything that I'm, that I'm doing must be seen. Who told you? Learn to interpret darkness. Ladies and gentlemen. From today, we need to repent from wanting to have light into being the light so that when darkness comes, we will not see the difference. You ask a lot of questions. How do I know? Some of you have come to me before and say, give me direction. Which business should I do? Give me direction. Which man, which woman should I marry? Let me give you eternal direction today. Learn to involve darkness. Or if you want to do business, look for darkness, then go and be the light. What do I mean? This world is not for people who dream. Everybody dreams. This world is not for people with visions. Everybody has a vision. This world is for those that are, have got the ability to interpret dreams and visions. What took Joseph and Daniel to the palace was not dreams. It was interpretation. You want to set up a business in a place, go and look, locate their darkness. What is it that they are suffering with? What is it that they are struggling with? Once you discover they don't have milli meal, go and order milli meal. Start selling it. So if you want to become great, don't look for light. Be the light. Because the day you become light, you will not begin to look for another light. You begin to look for darkness. When God saw the problem in the world, he saw the problem was darkness, that he sent his only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. God saw a problem, then he gave a solution.
this world is for solution givers. It's not for those that talk about problems. It's not for those that quit. It's for those that solve problems. Are you looking for a promotion at your workplace? Look for a problem. Sort it out. You will see what will happen. So anything around you as a Christian, as a child of God, look for a dark place. Go and shine there. Whatsoever you want to do, look for a dark place. Go and shine. Lastly, there's a scripture, it must be Hebrews 13 verse number 1. The Bible says, be good to everyone in that you may entertain strangers. As you entertain strangers, you'll find yourself entertaining angels. Why don't you see angels as Christians? It's not that angels don't exist amongst you. You don't see them because you are waiting for a moment where angels are going to enter with light. Psh, brightness. It doesn't work. The Bible says in the time of Abraham, the Bible says angels came as men to a point that other men started admiring them. So you can't see angels and when you hear a pastor say, I saw an angel, brightness enters. Sometimes uh, that's one of the things that will cause me to know is lying. Jesus came, rode on a donkey, because in that time, a donkey was the only mode of transport. When God came to pick Elijah, it was a chariot of fire. But if God was to come in this generation to pick you, what is it that God is going to use? He will use something that you know, not a chariot, because this is not a time for chariots. Believers, don't remain behind. The devil has gone digital. Why remain analog? Believers, open your eyes. When an angel comes, don't expect light from an angel. Provide the light. That's why the Bible says he turns you into ministers. He turns into a fire. So you are the one to provide light so that the angel can see. The angel is just a ministering spirit. So you are the one to give the fire. You are the one to give the light. So, this book is not just about Christianity. It's also about wealth. That which is in heaven, let it be on earth. I think this will be God's interest. Enough is enough. Children of God, we confess to belong to a big, big kingdom. Yet we are threatened by a minor kingdom. We are seeing other people taking over, yet us as believers. Tomorrow when you see me building a bigger house, you begin to ask, you are going to involve darkness. Is getting where is he getting? Uh, it's blood money. And you Christians, let me teach you one thing. You call everything coming from the sea, from the water. You call everything involving blood, rituals. Yet you also have two main rituals. Baptism, that's water. Why are you entering water? The second ritual, Holy Communion. Why do you say this is the blood of Jesus and they're taking? If those killing their relatives are taking over, what about you? Somebody died on the cross of Calvary. Why are we not taking over? The blood
blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, the Bible says, speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Why are we not taking over? When you go home, I want you to think twice. Sit yourself down, body, soul, and spirit. As you read this book, let it not be one of those books. I want you to have the heart of the author and the mind of the author as you read this book. And I know the Lord is going to bless you. Alex B. Simtale is who I am. God bless you. Thank you.